Hello and welcome to Bolt Action Reloading. Today we are going to give you the ultimate guide to 6.5 Creedmoor Brass, so stick around. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how I and the rest of the community here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post new videos and you won't miss anything. In this video, we are going to go over basically most of the 6.5 Creedmoor brass that is currently available so you can make a better informed decision on which one you should purchase next. Today we're going to be going over case weight measurements, internal case volume, neck wall variation, overall length measurements when shipped as well as after being fired, as well as the initial runout information before they were fired. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video so you won't miss anything because I'm going to give you a little bit more bonus data at the end. First guys, I realize there is one big omission, maybe two, to this data set. Today we're not going to be talking about any of the brass by Nosler, which is pretty pricey, as well as Alpha Munitions. I am well aware that Alpha Munitions make 6.5 Creedmoor brass, however since I started trying to make this video, they've been out of stock. I did reach out to them via email to see if it was possible to get a sample, and I have had no luck. So sorry, they just can't be covered by today's video. On the positive side guys, we are going to be coming from brass from Lapua, Hornady, Norma, Starline Small and Large Rifle, SIG, as well as Federal. All these various options were available at Midway.com, and that is honestly where most of them came from. I will put the lot numbers of the samples we are discussing in today's video on the screen for your reference, but keep in mind, obviously, the results from this sampling will not guarantee what yours might be when you get them, but maybe they'll give you a good idea. If you're new to reloading 6.5 Creedmoor, this is a great time to start. The new options added in 2017 have certainly increased both availability and options, as well as made the market more competitive. Before we get into every single measurement that we took, let's talk about the obvious differences and how they might affect your reloading process. Number one, let's start with primer pockets. Originally, there was only one large rifle primer bass, Hornady. However, last year, Lapua added their small rifle primer bass with their small special rifle primer pocket. However, that actually requires a specialty capping pin. Guys, I'll put a photo on your screen, but you'll see it actually takes a special decapping pin to be able to decap the Lapua brass. For this task, I actually purchased a Redding Reloading small decapping die. And in this die set came the small pin needed to be able to decap Lapua brass after it's been fired. If you guys decide to go the way of Lapua, and I don't blame you if you do, just be aware that unless you drill out those primer pockets, you're actually going to need a special decapping pin, unless possibly you use Redding Reloading dies. But it's something certainly to check, so be aware before you wreck any of your flash holes or decapping pins. The other small rifle primer is actually by Starline. Contrary to Lapua, however, they actually have a larger flash hole, so you should have no issues decapping your brass, no matter what decapping die or sizing die that you may choose. Some of you might ask, why would one bother with the small rifle primer bass? And the answer is simple, brass life. The typical failure mechanism of brass that I have found in 6.5 Creedmoor is the primer pockets getting loose on the large rifle primer brass. Not a split neck, not a case head separation. Depending on the type of brass you're using, after seven or eight firings, it's very common for the Hornet large rifle primer brass to have the primer pocket so loose that the primer will fall right back out of them. We'll talk more at the end of the video what may or may not be the advantage of having the large rifle primer, but again, it's one of the decisions that you'll need to make. All of the other brass options beside Lapua and the Starline small rifle are actually large rifle primers and should not bring us any special reloading considerations. So let's get started. When we start talking about the measurements and statistics, please keep in mind the sample sizes that we're talking about today. Lapua actually had 300 pieces. All of the others had 50, except Norma, which was 25. Let's start a discussion talking about case weight. Though the weight of the case is not really a sign specifically of quality, I know some reloaders sort their brass by it, and it's easy to measure. Let's find out what kind of consistency that we're getting. So put a chart on your screen. You guys can see the average case weights. So guys, all of the case weights will be in grains. The average case weight of the PUA was 164.95 grains. Norma was 155.25 grains. Hornady was 146.75 grains. Starline Small Rifle was 163.59 grains. The SIG was 158.98 grains. Starline Large Rifle was 160.54 grains. The Federal was 148.76 grains. So you guys can see the mins and max on your screen. What's really impressive, if you look at the extreme spread, out of 300 cases, the heaviest weight to the lowest weight was actually only 1.2 grains on the whole entire lot of the pool of brass. In my opinion, guys, very spectacular. Though, again, the internal case volume is much more important than the actual weight of the case. At least, I think that's what most people feel. Not too shabby, but again, only a sample of 25 pieces. The Norma only had an extreme spread of 1.7. 
I'll put a chart on your screen that'll give you a little bit better of a visual aid so you can kind of understand the quantity of each of those weights that was found. Obviously, the greater the width in the chart, the greater the spread and the number of cases found at each weight. If case weight is important to you, obviously Lapool wins us hands down. Such a large sample size and such a low extreme spread, this value is very impressive. Now, I'm sure where a lot of you will be interested, let's talk about case volume. To be fair to the case volume measurements, these were only taken on a sample of 25 pieces. Sorry guys, I'm just too lazy. That's what you're going to get today. This is all fired brass. The measurements were taken earlier on Lapua, Norma, and Hornady were all actually measured with water. Since those measurements were taken, those lots of brass have actually been fired multiple times. I did not want to have to retake them in case they've changed slightly and skew the results. I do feel that they're fairly accurate. Between doing the initial evaluation on those cases and doing today's evaluation, when I'm adding the Starline, the SIG, and the Federal Brass, these were actually all measured with 91% alcohol concentration, and the conversion to water weight was done based on that. I'm not sure exactly how concerned you will be of the actual average case volume as much as the extreme spread. Obviously, the more consistent these are, the better the lot should look. Average case volume of the Pua Brass was 52.4 grains, Norma was 52.93 grains, Hornady was 53.77 grains, Starline Small Rifle was 52.35 grains. SIG was 52.8 grains. Starline Large Rifle was 52.4 grains. Federal was 53.52 grains. Now, however, if I was going to rate this brass to who won this contest, I would certainly go by who had the smallest extreme spread. Having the least variation is very important. And as you can see, the Starline Large Rifle won this hands down. Though the Starline Small Rifle Primer was not far behind it, and of note when these measurements were taken, the actual Starline large rifle and small rifle cases were slightly shorter because they had not got to trim length yet. I could not trim them to even them out. Though, if you want to know what the actual overall lengths were, you'll find out in a minute. And one more special note before I move on. If you guys follow Johnny's Reloading Bench, and if you don't, you should. When he measured the federal brass that he got from shooting some federal non-typical hunting ammunition, he got a fairly significantly different number than that. So with anything, guys, if you really want to know, you should probably measure it for yourself. One thing as well to keep in mind, these values were taken actually after firing. I did not actually take a case value measurement before I fired this brass. I probably should have taken at least one just for reference. But actually, I did, kind of on a fluke for another video. So I can tell you that one of the SIG cases measured just under 52 grains of water prior to firing. And so obviously, going all the way from that 52 grains to an average of 52.8, is a fairly significant change. One reason why you should always fire form your cases before you take your measurements. So guys, since you kind of mentioned already, we might as well go into overall length. Not that the actual length of how these are shipped is drastically important. However, it might be of interest to know that these actual cases came longer than the maximum length, which is 1.92 inches. What is kind of interesting is how short some of them came. If you look at the Starline brass, they certainly set the record for the shortest brass, not only before firing, but certainly afterward. But if you're interested in those, you can certainly read them for yourself. Obviously, the star line seems to shrink drastically. That's why I would recommend always doing a fire forming before you actually do an overall length trim, just in case during the firing process, your cases actually shrink slightly. It's certainly nice to be able to fire those cases and then be able to trim them all to the same length. After the firing, the Starline small rifle had the shortest piece down to 1.901, a full 9 thousandths underneath minimum trim length. And its maximum was only 1.9065, so three and a half thousandths under trim length. Large rifle, very similar, had the same overall max, but the overall min was 1.902. Keep in mind the water weight variations that we talked about before, even with that drastic difference in overall length, because I was not able to trim these to take this measurement, they still had the most consistent case volume. Go figure that one out. So the next thing we're going to talk about is neck wall thickness. The measurement you're going to see is the best that I could possibly resolve from my dial indicator, average neck wall variation. I'm not going to tell you exactly how thick it was, but basically I put all the cases through my horny neck wall thickness gauge. So I was able to actually measure the variation, the neck wall thicknesses of the various cases. I'm not going to promise you that the numbers are exact, but they're the best that I could possibly resolve to. And I do believe, though they may not be perfect, the relation to one another will give you an idea of which one had the least variation to which one had the most variation. The average neck variation, obviously the average variation is measured in thousands. Lapua had 0.397 thousandths of neck variation. Norma, 0.335. The large rifle primer star line was the next best at 0.528. Hornady, all the way to 0.676. Star line small rifle at 0.81. Federal at 0.805. Star line small rifle at 0.81. And SIG at 0.87. 
Take that information for as you want, guys. If you guys want to sort it by standard deviation, it'll come out about the same. But guys, honestly, if you neck turn, that might not be a consideration at all. Probably the best standard deviations I've worked up on any of my loads actually came with a Norma brass. I do think that the variation in the neck wall thickness being low does certainly help with the consistency of the loads. The next we're going to talk about run out. You'll see something significantly missing from the chart. Numbers for Lapua, Norma, and Hornady. I actually did not have my runout gauge at the time that I took those measurements on those initial lots of brass. Therefore, I don't have the numbers and I didn't want to have to try and regenerate them after those cases have actually been through multiple firings. But since I have them for the four others, I will give them to you anyway. Take for what it's worth to, this is before they were fired as well, guys. And so I'm really not sure the initial runout measurements will actually matter. As you can see, Federal of all had the least average runout, followed by SIG, then the small rifle star line, and then the large rifle star line. But like I said, guys, I'm really not sure what the in initially how it matters. I think it's much more important after it's fire formed. Honestly, that is about everything for the statistics and measurements that we took on these cases. However, there is a little bit more information available. I did a load development with all these types of brass under the same conditions as I possibly could to see if they responded any different to the same load. There were five shot groups done with every single type of brass with IMR 4350 at 39 and a half grains, 40, 40 and a half, 41, and 41 and a half grains. And that's a chart that I'll put up on here now. This is probably a little bit more difficult to read, so if you guys really want to know, stick around, subscribe to the channel, and next week I'm actually going to give you all the velocity statistics and group information that I got when I shot all of these loads. So if you're interested in that, subscribe to the channel and watch next week's video. Or if it's been a couple weeks and you've caught this video, I'm sure I've created a playlist by now that should have that second video attached to it. One thing will be of note of that data is be aware when the test was run with Lapua, Norma, and Hornady Brass, the Federal Premium Match Primers were used where applicable. Since then, through testing, I have decided that I preferred Magnum Primers to be ran with my loads. I would have used a Magnum Primer in my initial loads had I known better at the time. However, I did not want to repeat my same mistake for the Starline, SIG, and Federal Brass Magnum Primers from CCI were used in that testing. But that is the only difference. So we try to make these the same as possible. Here's your bonus tips. If you stuck around this long, thank you, and here you go. Guys, aside from Brass Life, one of the things that we talk about when we talk about the small rifle and large rifle primer is does the small rifle primer have enough power to light off the charge? Should you use a normal non-magnum primer in your large rifle? Should you be using a magnum primer in your small rifle? There's lots of debate over this, and I'm not sure I'm going to answer it for you today. However, I did think it was interesting, so I put this chart together. Basically, for reference, guys, the two small rifle primer types of brass alongside the Starline large rifle primer bass. Why I picked this? The Starlines have almost identical case volume, and were both shot, obviously with CCI Magnum primers, obviously small and large, but if there was significant difference in the way the powder ignites small rifle versus large rifle, this graph might highlight the differences. Certainly what I thought of note, and also why I put Lapua on here, is strictly because it has almost identical case volume to the star line as well. Being at 52.4 grains, give or take a little bit, that's the identical average case volume of the star line. So you would expect similar performance. And wouldn't you know, I'm sure there was a little bit of a temperature differential from when I shot these two, the first load to the second, and obviously they have a different brand of small rifle primer. However, it is interesting that all the loads actually start off very similar to one another. But you will notice they both seem to change around the 40 to 45 point grain load and had slightly lower velocities than the large rifle primer samples that we tested. I don't know if you guys will be able to tell anything that you're interested in, but I did think it was very interesting that the small rifle primer bass exhibited this characteristic when we did our load test. And if you guys can think of a better way to test this, let me know in the comment section below. I'm really interested to see if you guys have a good test that might exacerbate this condition a little bit more. Or maybe I should just compare the small rifle to large rifle Starline brass. You guys tell me in the comments below. I certainly know having a small rifle primer is an advantage for brass life. I just guess when push comes to shove, does it give you better statistics? Does it handicap your velocity? And also keep in mind that Starline small rifle primer hole is the 80 thousandths hole, not the smaller hole the Lapua has. So both of those seem to be getting at a very similar rate. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comments section below. If you're not subscribed to the channel and you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button, especially if you guys want to catch the follow-up to this video. And like always, guys, until next week, stay safe in small groups.